I should be in shock that it's been going on this long, but I'm not. Another pay-per-view without Brock Lesnar appearing to defend his Universal title costs another 30 sins. This is obvious, but Brock preparing for a UFC comeback or having limited dates on his schedule is not an excuse. Just further proof that he should never have been champion in the first place. Yeah, yeah, he's a massive draw too, but he doesn't need a championship for that. Also, another 10 sins is being added because this is the least extreme that the Extreme Rules pay-per-view has ever become in WWE history. I know some of the matches were good, but come on, it's Extreme Rules. Hell, this is even the 10th annual Extreme Rules event, so why not make it epic and extreme on the 10-year anniversary? Tonight, they go extreme! But only few of them. Team Hell No is back! I never thought I'd see a more awkward reunion than the Shields reunion back in 2017, but Team Hell No proved me wrong. He wants to be at the top of the mountain. So why was he wasting time with Sami Zayn if Bobby Lashley wanted to be on top of the mountain? Haha, uh, <laughs> Woken Matt Hardy's music started with no volume. But won the gold with a 10-year-old kid. Michael Cole has forgotten Nicholas's name. Hardy and Wyatt are undefeated. Which most likely means that they are losing tonight. Thanks a lot for bringing that up and jinxing their role, Michael. We represent Monday Night Raw. Except for Corey Graves, who represents both shows. Kind of like Michael Cole in 2010. Thankfully, he's not as annoying as Michael was back then. In some ways, I don't have a problem with Ronda Rousey being at ringside, but you just know that the crowd is going to be chanting for her rather than pay attention to the event. We're here on Bo kick out at two. That was clearly a kick out at one, you moron. It's the beginning of what could have been an awesome brother versus brother confrontation, and yet nobody even references the resemblance of both Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt's face. Matt trying to convince Bray to commit cannibalism on his own brother. Matt Hardy obviously Ah, the camera was knocked onto the ring apron. Holding their own though to this point. There are two sins being added to the mix in this case. The first one is because Curtis Axel fell too early before Matt could connect with a kick. And the other one is because what a devastating kick to the air. Curtis Axel was once a tag team champion. No offense, but does anyone even remember the time Curtis Axel won the tag team titles with David Otunga back in 2011? Because I completely forgot about that until I researched what Michael Cole was talking about. Also, that was Michael McGillicuddy, not Curtis Axel. Same wrestlers, but two different characters. That's where it counts. Back in the fray momentarily. Wrestler accidentally gets knocked into his own partner, which ultimately cost them the match and the titles cliche. Is Woken Ren. Post-match interview. Though if this becomes a full-time thing for the ending of all matches at each pay-per-view event, then I will no longer qualify it as a sin. Until then... <sighs> How do you think... Curtis is addicted to Bo. Stretch Armstrong feel when he landed on the moon! What? Brock Lesnar is not interested in returning at this time. And I somehow haven't fired that unprofessional douchebag for that very reason, because I still don't know how to properly run as GM. Brock Lesnar refused to face the winner of a multi-man matchup, and I had to cancel that match. Or you could have just said, you're defending it against the winner of this multi-man match, and I don't care if you refuse. You're either doing it, or you can give me back that title. All you had to say was those two sentences. What's so fucking difficult about that? I'm gonna strip Brock Lesnar of the Universal Challenge. It took 469 days of the most horrible and unprofessional title reign in WWE history before Kurt Angle finally grew a pair of balls. Jesus, this is something we should have done well over a year ago. Again, two things have to happen. Michael, why the hell are you repeating everything Kurt just said? Balor Club! Ugh, it was bad enough hearing it's boss time for every entrance Sasha Banks made into the arena, but we seriously gotta hear Michael shout Balor Club is here for every entrance Finn Balor makes? Also, Balor Club. -a. It was bad enough that Baron Corbin is basically just Corporate Kane 2.0, but now he literally dresses in almost the exact same fashion as Kane did. This is ridiculous. This dumb running gag of Baron demanded that he be announced as Stephanie McMahon's personally appointed constable on Monday Night Raw. What are 18,000 people that need to be reminded of things from time to time? That could be one reason. The other reason could be because there's a guy in Canada who nitpicks everything we do and we like to piss him off with the constant reminders. Always in the match, he's always- Copyright infringement. Also, Baron may be talented, but he absolutely sucks at mimicking the too sweet gesture considering nobody woos like Ric Flair when they do that. Hey, I'm not gonna sweat Constable Corbin tonight. Probably because the lack of hair makes it a lot easier to prevent Baron from sweating, who knows. There's no way that he can hear Michael from this far away. As much as Jonathan Coachman would be great at CinemaSense 2 expansion, unfortunately wrestlers have proven in the past that they actually can hear the commentators from all the way in the ring. And now wrestling oh, Corbin. God. Doesn't look like Finn is the one wrestling Baron considering he's the one trapped in the submission hold. Years now to get back to this He's been in the WWE for a few years and yet Baron Corbin still has not realized that monologuing gets you nowhere but towards a loss. 
being a former NFL player. And the likely reason everyone doesn't know about that is because Baron sucked at football. And also, why are we even talking about Baron being a former NFL player? I guess when a WWE wrestler doesn't have a good championship reputation, we bring up things that happen outside the wrestling world, which is a sin. Focus on Finn! Never thought I'd ask this, but does Jonathan want a job application on being a WWE sinner? <sighs> Anytime you want to go ahead and defeat your opponent, I'm down for that. We interrupt Extreme Rules 2018 to bring you the addition of SmackDown where Baron lost his Money in the Bank briefcase due to a roll-up. I guarantee that moment is flashing before his eyes. Once again, I would have honestly removed a sin, maybe even three, if the Bludgeon Brothers started assaulting each other following the slap and shove. Also, Assault on Team Hell No backstage destroys what sadly was an awkward, past the time, nostalgia act instead of an awesome return of a great tag team. Hell, even the arguments are getting old with Kane and Daniel Bryan. Also, also, this assault backstage was honestly more extreme than anything we've seen in the ring in the first 40 minutes of this pay-per-view event. Oh my god, what does Rowan have against doors? You better be paying for that damage on the door, man. WWE and their weird-ass fetish for shark cages continue. Damn, I really thought we had gotten over that piece of shit cage. It has clearly never worked for any of the previous occasions. What makes WWE think it'll work this time? So he cannot interfere in this match. Tom Phillips is an idiot. What in the hell was James Ellsworth wearing on his legs? Did he get inspiration from Tyler Breeze or something? Hey, Tyler can actually pull it off because he is one sexy man. What? Why the hell are you guys giving me that awkward look? My only regret is that I didn't bring a bowl of popcorn. Because that would be considered eating on the job, duh. Shark Cage Cam. James is seriously suspended that low? Jesus, Asuka or Carmella could accidentally hit their heads off of that cage. Lift them higher like you do with everybody else who's been trapped in that cage. What the hell? Oh, yeah! There were so many security guards escorting James into the shark cage and not one of them thought to search through his outfit for any type of weapons. And after so many occasions, WWE is still dumb enough to let anyone enter the shark cage go in without checking them for possible weapons. He's not a criminal, Phillips! He, he might as well be in his behind bars. Wah, wah. Ellsworth, expert locksmith! Oh, fuck you. Well, you can't deny that no rules are being broken right here. James Ellsworth is being suspended above the ring. Literally. Also, since being suspended actually halts James and his plan, why doesn't Asuka continue to attack Carmella? It's Asuka's decision to wreak havoc on James that cost her the championship in the end. So Asuka is to blame for her loss. Don't raise it up! Raise it up? Corey, those guys were clearly calling for the cage to be lowered down, not lifted higher. Are you blind or something? Ow, my hands! And also, a small shot to the cage like that is enough to defeat someone who used to be undefeated for two and a half years. Oscar's furious! Post-match assault on security guards who weren't participates in the match anywhere. Previously on Extreme Rules. You know what? Fuck it. I'm throwing in five additional sins for WWE once again, recapping everything we already saw not even close to an hour ago. Talk about stalling time just to reach the four-hour mark, which this pay-per-view still failed to accomplish. Take out all the unnecessary replays of previous matches, and this may just be your average three-hour pay-per-view. Honestly got no more words to describe how impressed Jeff Hardy's face paint and artistic style continues to make me. Stream Rules is presented by... Skip! ...has somehow become even more dangerous. And he has failed in four times the WWE title matches, too, ever since removing himself from the WWE Universe. And oh, hey! Pre-match low-blow assault. Also, Shinsuke is addicted to Jeff's Hardys. What could have been an awesome match between Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura is sadly turned into a 7 second waste of time. So for every second this match existed, here's a sin. I'm likely gonna get dislikes for this, but I had completely forgotten that Randy Orr was out with an injury until the moment he returned. That's a sin on myself, but I don't have an additional sin counter. Oh! Next to a weird fetish for shark cages, WWE also has a creepy fetish for destroying testicles. Also, Randy Orton has gone through so many heel and face turns, he is practically turning into the big show here. I'm predicting a face turn in 2019, followed by another heel turn in 2020. It takes 65 minutes of pay-per-view time before WWE realizes that this event is called Extreme Rules and must have stipulated matches. And guess what? After this match, we gotta wait nearly another damn hour for the next one. Monster in the day. Wait, so that's literally his nickname for winning the Money in the Bank briefcase? How come we haven't changed the letters on the briefcase yet to spell monster instead of money? He can cash in whenever he wants! If that's the case, how come Braun Strowman hasn't taken a referee with him to wherever Brock Lesnar lives and challenged him right then and there? I know that Kevin Owens has second thoughts about competing in the steel cage match against Braun Strowman, but come on! This entrance is starting to turn into the length of The Undertaker's entrance, minus the intensity. Fighters! 
Strowman begging Owens to fight him. If Braun was begging Kevin to fight him, he'd be on his knees with his hands up and surrender. There's a difference between begging and demanding, Michael. You see, Michael, that's begging right there. Also, begging for mercy. Oh, no. And the oh. Here's a sin out because I like that tactic from Braun, stepping on your opponent so that he has nowhere to go once the cage door closes on his face. Although, that sin is being put back because despite the fact that Kevin could not move out of the way, he could still counter with his arm or something and grab the door as it's closing. If Kevin seriously doesn't think that Braun can get out of handcuffs, then he is an idiot. This is the same guy who overturned a goddamn ambulance. That's what you get! Escape the damn cage! Sorry, Kevin, but you're not in D-Generation X, nor will you ever be. Congratulations, Braun. You made yourself lose the match on purpose. Although, you gotta admit, that was perfect timing on the movement of Kevin to land on the table upon getting tossed off the top of the cage. Nowhere near the intensity and shocker of mankind getting thrown off the cell by The Undertaker, but it's still a cool moment. Why are you showing us this again? It's literally been 15 minutes since this moment happened. Half of Team Hell No! Uh, Daniel, you do remember that your team is called Team Hell No, right? So why aren't you doing the no taunt? This isn't called Team Hell Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought Daniel had a nagging rib injury that prevented him from chanting yes with both his hands. Now all of a sudden it's better? Man, this guy sucks at selling injuries. Followed up by Daniel Bryan's funeral. Corey Graves just foreshadowed the funeral of Team Hell No coming on the following edition of SmackDown Live. Also, if Kane was in no condition to compete, why didn't Paige just allow Daniel to find another partner or something? It'd honestly be better and more fair than a handicap match situation. Also, also, in some ways, it'd be funny if Daniel managed to win this match alone, thus giving him a reason to shout at Kane, I am the Tag Team Champions. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Team Daniel Bryan might. That tag should not be legal, considering Rowan wasn't hanging onto that mini tag rope connected to the top rope. Uh, no! Harper! Damn, that's the second time tonight where I placed the wrestler accidentally gets knocked into his own partner cliche. Only difference between this one and the last one was it doesn't end up costing the Bludgeon Brothers the match. Good to see Kane to the rescue, but at the same time, with an injury to his foot, we just know there's no way in hell that Team Hell No is winning this match. And this single foot injury from Kane is what ultimately causes the end of this very brief reunion of the team, sadly. I got Daniel missed Kane completely, and yet the tag is still legal for some stupid reason. Yeah. Brother. Funny how Harper reaches for his tag team championship title despite the fact that Rowan was given both by the referee. This match has seriously been labeled extremely personal. Hey, if you want to stick with that, why not make this match a street fight or something? Because a regular one-on-one -on -one match on an event like this for a few that's extremely personal is not how you build the hype. Also, considering these two end up facing each other a week later for the chance at facing Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship, why couldn't they have just done that for this match? Bob here was in the main event of WrestleMania. Oh, bullshit. No, he wasn't. The main event of WrestleMania 23 was John Cena versus Shawn Michaels. And if memory serves me correct, Bobby Lashley wasn't in that match. He was busy shaving Vince McMahon's head with Donald Trump earlier in the show. It's presented by... Shut up. Don't care. Determined to take Roman Reigns' block spot. Determined to take Roman's block spot? Oh, I get it. In Roman Reigns' yard, he likes to play with his blocks, and now Bobby wants to play with them. No wonder this feud was labeled extremely personal. The moment you mess with someone's toy blocks, you're in for an ass kicking. Roman better get himself. Count to five, you fucking moron. Seriously, it pisses me off when the referee decides to not do their job properly and give wrestlers longer time to break the hole before disqualifying them. He might as well not count at all if he's just gonna do that. To his feet is Raymond. Who the hell is Raymond? Back up to the apron and it's at this moment right here where the referee would have said 10. Being on the ring apron doesn't break the count because the wrestler is still technically outside the ring. And he stalls for just enough time to allow Roman to attack Bobby, sending him back into the ring. Oh, Superman punch! Actually, Roman hit Bobby with his elbow, so it should really be called the Superman elbow for this moment. Bobby caught him! Haha, oh, ah, you didn't lift Roman high enough to put him to the table. Back into the ring! And what is Bobby- This is the third time that I've called out this referee for poor officiating since Bobby should have been counted out for the second time tonight. He's been here for a while, does he still not know how the rules of a wrestling referee job works? Rage! That's the way! Hooray! Bobby won! One question, how does this not confirm his shot at facing Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at SummerSlam? Hell, Bobby has to face Roman one more time just to get there, and lo and behold, he lost that! 
It took 53 minutes of more pay-per-view time before we got to our next extreme stipulated match, and holy shit, how many times am I going to lose my mind over this? Let's remind everyone why Ronda's here tonight. Despite the fact that we have already explained why several times tonight, and it was once again explained in the promo video leading up to this match. And a story of uh, two former best friends. A story that we thought was completed following Backlash, but here we are nonetheless. The fourth consecutive pay-per-view match between Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. It's almost like the four consecutive pay-per-view matches between H.S. Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. Plot! An ingenious strategy! Nia clearly saw that Alexa had a kendo stick before she even turned around to continue the chase and somehow didn't stop or try to prevent Alexa from hitting her. Nia Jax just grabs it and Rather than whack Alexa with every weapon she takes from her, Nia decides to throw them into the ring instead. Bad strategy. You have the chance each time, Nia, so hit her in the fucking face like you always wanted to. Well, they keep kendo sticks under there in uh, case of ninjas. What? And now a big- oh. Haha, you failed to toss Alexa on any of the weapons as she ended up landing between the garbage can and chair. Alexa Bliss, go! Oh. I'm honestly surprised that any of these shots are affecting Nia at all considering the major size difference between her and Alexa. And look at I bet even Ronda Rousey realized this match was going nowhere and got involved just to make things interesting. The Rousey's lost it! Send him Ronda can't even toss someone into the ring properly. You see, that wouldn't have happened if he did not debut in professional wrestling as a part-timer. Also, when Ronda was assaulting Alexa Bliss and Kurt Angle, while classified as an active competitor, there were referees and security trying to stop her. Now that Ronda is assaulting Mickey James while serving a 30-day ban from WWE, there are no authority figures to be seen, because WWE logic totally makes sense. Ronda Rousey had no problem leaving the ring and running after both Alexa and Mickey while the match was going on, but when the match is over and she's so close to them, she decides to show mercy and let them go. Yep, that's exactly what the situation is. Not even the WWE Championship match has any sort of stipulation added to it. Does this event want to be extreme or not? Happy Hulu Day! Wait, if that actually was a day, nobody would give a shit about it. It's Rusev Day! AJ Styles non-pyro pyro. God damn it, we were so close to having an entire pay-per-view since without me having a place in the no one cares what's trending sin. Just when I thought we had hope. Rope, the official AJ senses with a force must indeed be strong because he was not looking in the direction of Aiden English whatsoever when Aiden pushed the ropes further to help Rusev. Rusev not letting up! Once again, the selling of the leg injury on the part of Rusev is outstanding. Any other wrestler would have pretended that their leg healed up like magic. Rusev knows how to make a situation all the more tense. Oh, Rusev. Attempted cheated tactic by heel wrestler's manager ends up backfiring cliche. Hey, it's Haha, Michael Cole got interrupted. Don't take. Could be five. That's ironically the amount of falls Dolph Ziggler wins in the end when the following main event goes into overtime. Could be 10, 15, 100, 1,000. 1,000 falls in 30 minutes? There's 1,800 seconds in 30 minutes. There'd have to be like 30 pinfalls every damn minute for that to happen. Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Michael doesn't realize that he's referring to winners of a 60 minute Iron Man match, which are much more impressive victories than from a 30 minute Iron Man match. The reason Ziggler's champion today is because of Dolph Ziggler. So, the reason Dolph Ziggler is champion is because of Dolph Ziggler? Oh, so Drew McIntyre had absolutely nothing to do with it whatsoever. Gotcha. Now you gotta wonder what kind of- Hi-Fi! On Monday Night Raw. That okay, I understand that both Dolph and Seth want to keep as much energy in them as possible in a 30 minute match, but come on, I don't want to be bored out of my mind in the first five minutes, which I already am. Left no falls yet. In case you were clueless on what the scoreboard in the bottom left corner of the screen means. I definitely think that- This happens 24 times, so here's 24 sins. I understand the fans can do whatever they want, but once again, that doesn't mean they are immune to the sins. It's one thing to chant what you want, but to count down from 10 like this is the goddamn Royal Rumble match for every passing minute completely ruin this fucking match! Showing complete and utter disrespect to the wrestlers in the ring by not giving a shit on what happens and making it all about themselves. And Ziggler though! Wow. Stop! Stop. Counter after counter after counter reign of the curb stop removes two sins. What is he doing? Drew McIntyre is addicted to Dolph Ziggler by giving Seth a 3-0 lead. If I were him, I would have hit Dolph, thus giving him a fall instead. He's got to disqualify McIntyre! Disqualified Drew? He's not even in the damn match. It's Dolph who gets disqualified because of the sudden assault. What is McIntyre? After the announcement of Seth's next fall, Drew starts attacking him again. If anything, Seth Rollins should be up 4-0 because Drew got Dolph disqualified once again. The Claymore! And now Seth should be up 5-0 after the 40 second pause in between assaults, yet the score still says 3-0. Because now we're even. 
How the hell is a 3-1 to one lead for Seth Rollins considered even for these two, Jonathan? Your lack of math skills are amusing. Turning off the clock was honestly the best thing WWE did to attempt to silence those pathetic 10-second countdowns from the fans. Sadly, though, it doesn't work, as you'll soon see. Never pay off for Dolph Ziggler. I'll honestly take hearing a Where's the Clock chant over a 10-second countdown any day. May also be an annoying chant, but nothing gets more annoying than the countdown for this case. Oh god, turning off the clock made it worse because now the countdowns are happening all over the place. At this rate, we'll never have another Iron Man match in WWE again, and this crowd is to blame for it. I'm too sick to raise my voice though, so you guys get a lucky break. The referee easily could have seen Dolph's legs get on the ropes before he even got into position for the pinfall, and he somehow doesn't. Now ahead, four matches to three. Four matches? There's only one match, Corey. Side dive this time connecting! What in the hell was that kind of landing on the part of Dolph? With a blockbuster to Don't get confused. The fans are not cheering because Seth may potentially go up a fall. They're not even paying attention to this match whatsoever and only cheer because the clock went back up on the scoreboard. Rollins up now. He no! We were so close! The show was almost over and I didn't have to place the 10 cent penalty for the 10 chest during countouts. No, no, no! Slingshot! Ow, my hand! This match has been ruled a draw! Um, has anyone remember that big time Iron Man matches for championships usually go into overtime when this sort of thing happens? So I'm gonna do a little bit of quick research here. Don't even bother doing research, Michael. Oh, it's it's the the you you gotta gotta be me. Boy, that escalated quickly. That overtime sure as hell didn't last long.